you know, necessity being the mother of invention. At the time we first had the idea, I think it was my crazy idea, to port Zork from the mainframe world to get it on this TRS-80 Model 3. Um, you know, the question was, how are we going to get it on this machine that has 32K of RAM and, a, and a, an 80K disk drive when the game was well over a megabyte at the time? And uh, Joel and I, uh, Joel Perez and I, actually were living in Pittsburgh at that time. Joel's family's from there. And I was there because I was going to do a residency, actually, there that I never ended up doing. Um, but anyway, we sat around and we talked about how we might do it. And, and, and we were thinking about this language, uh, U, um, UCSD Pascal, that had been written at, at um, you know, University of California. And they'd written a version of Pascal, that was, which is a programming language, that was designed as kind of a bytecode interpreter. And um, that was very general purpose. And so it was very slow. I mean, there were a lot of issues with that as a language. But, but the concept of designing a virtual machine and a language that all of these things could use and a language that was compact because... You know, if you think of the analogy of a real language, imagine each word meaning a whole sentence. That therefore you could speak very, you know, with a very small number of words and get a lot across. And it was exactly the same idea. So he said, okay, so, so what, are, what are things a language has to do? Well, a language, you know, you're going to need to add and subtract things because people are going to have scores. So you're going to need to have a little math. You're going to need to be able to jump around. And then there are going to be a bunch of things that are uh, uh, very specific to the game like the idea of here's an object and an object may have a container and you know and an object has some properties it may have a weight and it may have this and that so you you put together a language that was oriented that was designed specifically to do adventure gameish things so you're making it as compact as it could be um and and that's really where where it started from and Joel and I you know designed the language and then you know part of the fun for me uh you know, had, didn't even have to do with writing the game or the content, but it was it was technically how are you going to make this work? So we had to write, we had to design the um, the machine independent language. We had to write an assembler for it. We had to write a compiler for it if we were going to ever have anyone write in a high level language, which we figured we would have to do. And, and we'd have to have all these tools, <laughs> you know. And then you'd have to have interpreters on these different machines. You'd have to have the piece that looks at at at, at these byte codes at this specific thing that's now called Z language or Z code and interpret it on different machines. So there are a lot of pieces in order to get this thing on, you know, on a small machine. I mean, we had to do a lot of technology basically. And, and what's interesting now to me is, you know, and none of us thought of it at the time. I and mean, we didn't think we were doing anything particularly, well, we thought we were doing interesting work, interesting in the sense that it interested us. We didn't think we were doing work that was valuable in any other way, I don't think. Um, but the fact is, the other way, I don't think, um, but the fact is, you know, a lot of the pieces that we had to come up with were, were really bleeding edge at the time, and, uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure now, in retrospect, that we were probably the first commercial bytecode interpreted language, and, and the irony of that is, is what you were, what you were asking about. I mean, it's still being used. I mean, geez, I mean, look at everything that's happened in technology. I mean, we're talking about something that's, that's now 27 years old, and yet this thing is still being used. I, you know, I, I, I get a kick out of that. And, uh, you know, we were, it was, um, we wrote object-oriented code before we knew what it was, because that term hadn't been invented yet, as near as I can tell. Um, or maybe in, in some research places it was, but we didn't know about it. I mean, we wrote our code that way because it seemed to make sense to us that that was going to be the best way to to have a game in which you can give any kind of command and still come back with a a, a, a plausible response was that you had to have classes of objects and they had to be able to inherit kinds of properties. So if if you have a, a bag and you don't know anything else about it, but you know it's a kind of container if someone says put something in it that you you know what that means it's not insane or if they say put something in a in a you know in the wall you know that's crazy because you know a wall isn't a kind of thing that things can be put into 
So, you know, by classing that and, and, and rules that are based on classes and subclasses is what object-oriented programming is about. I mean, having the intelligence embedded in the object rather than in procedural code. Um, so it turned out what we were doing was very state-of-the-art at the time. Again, I mean, the irony is I think we were just searching for the best solution to a very specific problem. Um, and But I think that the training and a lot of the work we'd done at the Lab for Computer Science, which all had to do with thinking of hard problems that, you know, mainly were things that ARPA was interested in and the, um, the Defense Department's research agency. I mean, just came up with an approach to thinking of problems, which was very much out of the box. Um, but yet, actually it's interesting, um, but yet, actually it's interesting, uh, it was out of the box, but yet it was aimed at a specific problem. It wasn't like AI. We weren't trying to solve vision. We weren't trying to solve um, um, real natural language. I mean, that was the beauty of it is the AI lab at MIT, if they were trying to do this, they would have, you know, my guess is they would have come up with something 10 times as big that couldn't have possibly worked, that would be slow as hell that was trying to do this very general thing, breaking up things into word groups and coming up with trees and grammars. And what we did, well, you know what I did, I mean, when I wrote the parser, is I thought, okay, we're dealing with a very specific subset. People are talking to this thing. They're giving commands. I don't have to solve the general problem, What I have to, and, but it has to be fast. I need something that's going to work, that's going to be fast, that's going to understand the vast majority of a limited set. Um, so rather than trying to solve the big problem, we tried to solve the achievable problem and actually get it done and get it working and get it performing well. Um, and that was the focus of the group at the Lab for Computer Science that we're at, which is, and we were looked down on, I think, by a number of the other groups because we weren't researchy. We weren't trying to solve a philosophical issue or a or one of the core problems of artificial intelligence. We were trying to use some of those techniques to do this real world thing. And because it was a game, it had to be fun and quick. And, you know, I mean, it wasn't like, oh yeah, we can do it, but you type something in and it takes 30 seconds to get a response. We knew that wouldn't work. So in the back of our heads is also, how's it gonna perform? What's the size gonna be like? I mean, that, and that was, I think, uh, those were some of the disciplines that we, um, you know, that we learned from that group, and, 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 and those came together just in, in an odd way. And as I say, it's, it's, it, it's some combination also of amusing. And those came together just in, in an odd way. And as I say, it's, it's, it, it's some combination also of amusing and gratifying and something that, that, the, you know, that the language, the actual thing we used uh, that we created is still in use, and that the ideas we came up have turned out to be generally useful.